OK, so back Went to well. our Omni microphone. Yep. Uh, I've drawn the diaphragm there and the back plate there because this is generally a condenser type microphone, right. whether electric or externally polarised. Mm -hmm. There is an issue here. If this is a truly sealed compartment, right. guess what? When you go up on top of a mountain or down... Pressure it, differences. Yeah, that's going to bend the diaphragm in yes. or suck it out, etc, etc, etc. What does uh, that do to it? Well, uh, if it, if it bends in, mm. it's going to increase the sensitivity of the microphone. Right. Uh, if it bends out, it reduces the sensitivity. Mm. There is another factor. If you get too much pressure on it, uh, you'll actually force it onto that fixed rigid back plate. Yep. And it'll go dead. Completely. Uh, yeah, basically because it can't move. It's yeah. pressed against the back plate. So there'll always be just a little, a little bit of air leakage port. in there. Right. And you can plan that air leakage. Basically, the idea is uh, any slow variations in pressure mm -hmm. can put air in or out of there. Right. Well, guess what? That forms a low frequency uh, limitation to the system. It does, yes. And, Our well, uh, you can plan it. You, right, you can. If you Just make, like speaker box design. Yes. Yes. If you make that a very little hole with possibly a labyrinthine path, you can have that time Word of constant. The day. Yeah. Labyrinthine. Labyrinthine. <laughs> uh, you can make that low frequency, the, mm -hmm. the diaphragm's low frequency pole, you can put it down in the sub one hertz region. So that's a tuned port? It's not tuned. No, it's no. not, no? Could uh, you? Uh, no. You wouldn't, right. is all. Okay. Uh, mind you, we will come back to an element where you would, but not at very, oh. very, very low frequencies. I've simply drawn that as. Uh, Usually what happens is they plan for a bit of air leakage just underneath the seals here or under, underneath the right. crimp joint that goes over is that there. because or, of the enclosure at the back of it really doesn't allow uh, yeah. for that or is that... Oh, quite often on uh, cheap electrodes you're going to have a PCB in here. Of course. Again with a kind of yep. crimp roll holding it. <coughs> and it has the fed in there. And yeah. And it just allows a little bit of slow air leakage around that right and that's enough to equalize things but it also sets the low frequency pole and you can set that wherever you feel like mm -hmm. generally you might set it down in the 20 hertz ish yep. region for a commodity microphone right. uh, because that's relatively high in the scheme of things mm -hmm. <coughs> so you can have a relatively high degree of leakage there and it, you don't have to control it that well right to, yeah, it doesn't matter on a commodity mic where, where the frequency response is around there. As long as it's somewhere below voice range, phew, who cares? Yep. Okay, um, on a measurement microphone though, they might put it down sub one hertz, mm -hmm. and that's why you wouldn't use them as a vocal microphone because when you're going put 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 with uh, plosives yep. into such a microphone, uh, you will make the diaphragm stick. Oh, got it. <laughs> what about pro stage mics? Uh, they are generally planned to have around about a 20 hertz-ish, right. uh, or, or sometimes as high as 100 hertz. Oh, why? Uh, again, for that uh, issue uh, of plosives, right. uh, yes. if you've got a rock and roll screamer hard yep. up on the microphone, mm -hmm. uh, you've got a couple of layers of protection. Uh, you've got the, the grill with yep. its spongy stuff there acting as a pop filter. Pop filter, yeah. <coughs> and then you've got the intrinsically defined low frequency response of the diaphragm so it can take a hit and bounce back. Mm -hmm. Got it. And what's the dynamic range of these uh, suckers? If you're talking Not about as good as dynamic, com com compared to dynamic. Ah, there's a number of limitations on these. Uh, a, a, a pure, uh, uh, how do you put it, electric, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. a pure condenser microphone right. Yeah. <coughs> uh, without all the electronics hung off behind it. Uh, the main limitation is the linear range of the diaphragm yeah, there. The movement. Right. And because okay. the space in there is really, really small, uh, mm. it might be of the order of 170, 160 dB SPL right. before it starts slapping against the back plate or yep. exhibiting other gross nonlinearity. Got it. Sometimes higher. But, okay, we've pretty much covered the simplest microphone which is the Omni. Yes. Okay. Yeah, what is the difference though between a condenser mic and a, like a proper 
one and an electorate ah. mic. Okay. Uh, we might roll this over into the next a episode. Video. Right. But All right. I'll give the quick description. Okay. Uh, with a, uh, both of them have a movable diaphragm, mm -hmm. which is a conductor, yep. and a fixed plate, which is also a conductor. Right. In a externally polarised condenser microphone. What do you mean by externally polarised? It doesn't have the electric bit in it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the, uh, these are also called externally polarised or mm -hmm. pre-polarised. Right. Pre-polarised means it's got some electric stuff in there. Got it. Okay. With uh, externally polarised, we're basically coming along with our own voltage that we've generated, mm -hmm. somewhere between maybe 50 and 200 volts, applying that voltage to the plates yep. so that they're, they've got a big charge on them and mm -hmm. then sensing what happens to the charge. The differential charge yes. on the plates. In a pre-polarised microphone, we come along with a material such as Teflon or one of the other uh, fluorocarbon type plastics mm -hmm. to which we've applied a charge and locked it in place and we put that in there yep. and that is the moral equivalent of applying an external voltage. Got it. And that's what's in all the cheap ass mics and likely the one you're, almost certainly the yep. one you're <laughs> and I'm wearing right now. And there's a few different methods of construction too. Right. Uh, actually I might go over into construction of typical cheap and cheerful electric microphones. First of all we'll start out off with a tubular body. Let's put a wobbly diaphragm there and we'll pretend mm. that uh, that's a thin enough material that it will vibrate quite happily with applied sound pressure. Right. Uh, we'll put a fixed plate in there and then figure out what do we do next. Okay, um, one of the things that we can do is we can put, okay, this material here, the red stuff, will make that Teflon or something like that mm -hmm. to which we can apply the charge. Right. And the, incidentally, the way that they apply the charge apparently is they, uh, during the forming process when it's molten, as it's cooling, they, they apply a polarizing voltage across, you know, from the top to the bottom side of the film. And as it solidifies, it locks that charge in place within the body, within the material of the plastic. Got it. And Forever? Is there any yes, degradation uh, over time? There can be. And it depends on the resistivity of the material. Right. If the material has poor resistivity, mm -hmm. as some of the early uh, beeswax type materials did, mm -hmm. they'd only last a few years and then the right. charge would just dribble away within itself. Mm -hmm. Teflons though, uh, they've got time constants of a couple of hundred years. Yes, yep, they're enormous. <laughs> yep. and, uh, Very useful material, Teflon. Uh, in fact, at the CSIRO uh, back in 2000, I saw uh, their, uh, they'd done measurements over a period of, I think, about 20 years mm. on an electric material, and it had not changed by, I think it was something like 0.01%. It was about uh, 0.1 of a dB over the last 20 years. Nice. So <coughs> that material really does lock the charge in place. Okay, let's put a gold diaphragm there. Oh, no, we can't put the gold diaphragm there. Why not? Why? Because if we've got the charge that side, mm -hmm. there's actually no charge between those two oh, things. Oh, yes. Bap. Bap, bap. So in fact, the conductor has to go on that side. So we make electrical contact to that bit there and to that bit there. Mm -hmm. That electric film, which is you know, polarised with, say, positive that side, negative that side, yep. whatever, uh, it acts as the polarising voltage between the two plates. Mm -hmm. That works pretty well, but you're limited by the fact that the diaphragm material is also doubling as your dielectric and right. stuff like Teflon might not necessarily make a great uh, mm -hmm. diaphragm material. Yep. Lovely, lovely electric diet. Uh, of course. Lo lovely electric material, but not so good as diaphragms. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you might take a slightly different approach. Yep. And again, we'll put a, uh, a diaphragm there, which might be 
mylar or something, which is a little bit better behaved as a diaphragm material. Right. This time, we'll put the gold plating on the inside, where it's a bit harder to scratch, and take the electrical, electrical connection off there. And where do we put our electric material? Uh, I'm running out of colours here. We put the electric material there. All right. That's called a back electric. Okay. That, and do they advertise them as that or you just don't know? Uh, usually if you're buying them from a hobbyist shop, yeah, you don't know. You don't know. Yeah. If you're buying them from a manufacturer, mm -hmm. they'll tell you. Does it matter? <sighs> a huge amount? Yes, the back electric types are much more stable. Right. In terms of what? <coughs> uh, in, in terms of all of the properties of the microphone. Frequency that you, response. Uh, yeah, and sensitivity, sensitivity and, and whole, charge yep. retention is better with a back dielectric. Okay. Uh, it's... Uh, they sound better all around. Yeah. Yes, generally. Uh, it's probably why, a, fair, a fair way of saying it. Why doesn't everyone make them like that? Uh, more expensive? Basically because it's cheaper to put a lump of uh, <laughs> yeah. te Teflon on the front right. rather than have the multi-layer construction there. So your, your cheapest and nastiest microphones are probably going to be uh, Teflon yep. with the gold plating on the front, right. which is more susceptible to damage, mm -hmm. uh, more susceptible to erosion, and just don't sound as good because the uh, Teflon's not as good a diaphragm. Yeah. What sort of typical dimensions are we talking about here? Yeah. Minimum and maximum. Yeah, okay. can make these. The largest I've seen is about 15 millimetres. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, the smallest ones, about 2 millimetres. Hmm. Now, the 2 millimetre ones are typical of the kind of thing that you might get in, for example, a hearing aid. Right, okay, yep. Let's of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's got to be tiny, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and of course the hearing aid microphones are more likely to use this back electric construction mm -hmm. uh, because they're after quality and stability. Got it. They're living in yep. a pretty adverse environment. Uh, yep. You know, who knows what kind of creepy crawlies are floating around people's ears. Uh, <laughs> 